Now look at that. 55 watts. Come on then. 101 C. Come on, cool it down. Fan kick in now already. Welcome to Technotis. In this video, we're going to be checking out this mini PC. This is from Geekcom. It says Intel inside and it's called the Mini IT11. And it's got some very interesting features. So um, let's, you know, test it, tear it apart and see how good it is. And also let's see how good this sponsored segment is. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So we're not going to be doing the unboxing or what's inside the box. If you want to check that out, go check out the Box Tech Episode 2. We're going to be unboxing that over there. But we're going to be plugging it in and testing it straight away. This power brake is actually quite nice. Like there's some kind of light over here. And if you look at the measurements in the back there, it's 19 volts and 4.74 amperes, which means it's about 90 watt power brake, which can deliver quite a bit of power. Geekom, straight away. We're on. Windows. It's interesting. This HDMI on default puts out like 720p or something like that right now. It's horrendous. Is it Geekom or Gcom? Alrighty, finally we got into Windows now here and this PC is on. And interestingly, like to get this display to work properly, I had to plug two of them in. So one HDMI and then one USB-C because you can get four displays actually, you know, running from there. There's one HDMI port, one DP port, and then two USB-4 ports, which also support, you know, display pass through. So if I have just the USB plugged in, USB-C one, then it will show that weird kind of pixelated image. If I have just the HDMI plugged in, it also shows pixelated image. If I plug both of them in and then say that it's duplicated image on both screens, then it will work good on both of them. As you can see, I can swap between the two screens and then it will just be, it'll be pretty much the same. Just a little bit of difference in color, as you can see. So I'm recording the display out, so nothing else should be working in here. We've got the i7 1195G7 processor, which basically is a four core processor only and eight threads. For memory, we're running 3200 megahertz transfers per second. So it looks like there's only two DIMMs inside that we have 16 gigabytes or so two eight DIMM sticks. We have one SSD. It's an Intel 500 uh, gigabyte SSD. We're gonna do the test how good that is. We've got a Wi-Fi 6 actually here, which is very interesting. And then Iris XE graphics um, there as well. So multi-core test, go. Whoa, we're already thermal throttling. Okay, that's interesting. And now we're not, as you can see. It's still very quiet. The fans should be kicking in already. We're pulling 27 watts from the CPU. Let's have a look how good is going to be the score. Only now I can hear the fans there. Core clock speeds 3.2. I'm just looking at the specs on Intel Arc for this processor and the max turbo frequency should be 5 gigahertz. But look at that. We have hit 5.2 gigahertz on uh, core number three, as you can see here, which is uh, very, very interesting. Two cores have gone over 5 gigahertz and then two of them are 5 gigahertz. So. That's pretty good. Obviously, all core boost here is about 3.2 and looks like it's going down, down, down. Let's see our score. What was it? 5,012 points. So, you know, the multi-core isn't that impressive, but still, look, um, equal system there is, is running actually slightly slower. 1165G7 gets slightly slower uh, speed here. So we are a little bit better. Now, the thing is, we were thermal throttling pretty instantly. So it's tried to keep it down. So this is the graphics cores, integrated graphics, graphics, and see how much, you know, power we're gonna be putting there. Um, right now, 0.2 watts there, 0.5 watts. So let's see uh, what's gonna happen. Iris XE graphics. We are doing uh, 54, 47 frames per second. Not much, but look at that. 21, 17 watts now, 12 watts, trying to push 56. So it's interesting, even though the CPU like package 
uh, power is like, you know, the TDP for the CPU is 28 watts. The actual uh, a GPU can pull another 20 watts. So what if we add this there as well now? Let's see what's going to happen now. The graphics cause, see, instantly dropped 5 to 5 watts from 20 watts. And then the T. TP is still like about 20, 28. So now there we have the execution ones there at 18 watts. So if I close this, let's see what happens. There we go. Look at these. The actual uh, performance cores now gone back to uh, 23 watts. So interesting inside there, the GPU cores and CPU cores are actually, you know, kind of sharing the power. Uh, power back package there. Next of all, let's see how good is the SSD inside there. While this is running, let's talk about this PC then. First of all, the CPU performance isn't anything amazing in terms of, you know, you're not going to be doing amazing rendering or something like that. But if you want something that maybe sticks behind your TV, behind your monitor in some small spaces where you need four 4K outputs, for example, and something that's very, very quiet, efficient, um, maybe has some, uh, you know, good storage options like there. There's actually SATA and Ender 2 inside there. We're going to look at it inside in a moment. Uh, small, you can lock it, some Kensington lock or something like that. Maybe, you know, you're running a shop and you want the shopkeeper, shop, shop assistant to actually have one of these. Also, if you're looking for something that is like an ingest uh, PC, you've got very fast USB uh, ports there. You've got 20 gigabits, 220 gigabits, gigabits per second ports and then two 10 gigabit uh, second bit ports there and if you want to have like a dock in there because this is like USB for your so in theory you can have some kind of dock there as well very very interesting option there or just like surfing the web and link like a PC on the go okay our uh, SSD has done its its benchmark now so this CPU actually does support PCI gen 4 drives but obviously that one in there is not PCI gen 4 drive so if we are looking at the the actual random um, 4 kilobit uh, Q1 thread 1 uh, megabytes per second. In fact, we are slightly faster than the 990 Pro compared to the 980 uh, from Samsung drives. So very, very interesting uh, speeds of this. Uh, I think this is Sodigum. Uh, what's this drive called there again? Sodigum or something. We'll look inside there. So. It's, it's not like amazing, but there's no need to really waste like a super fast SSD for this one because this is not meant for that or you'll probably be wasting the power. Now, let's have a look at into the BIOS, see if we can uh, do anything else in there, maybe increase the power limit or something like that. And then let's open this PC up. Power and performance. Configure tur turbo mode. Oh, interesting. Looks like they have already, uh, two of the cores have been set to 5 gigahertz, as you can see. Configure TDP, enable configurable TDP. Let's try this. Oh, let's see. Let's put the power limit time window to max. We'll put this one to maximum as well. TDP, PL2, 12 watt, PL1, 18 watt. But let's just put the power window to a bit longer. Okay, let's see if that changed anything and if we can get any more juice out of it. Okay, remember previously we got like 5002. Okay, let's see what we're going to get this time. CPU power 37 watts, 36 watts. Come on then. 101C. Whew, come on, cool it down. Fan kick in now already. 100 degrees. Thermal throttling. Yeah, but look at that. We're still trying to run it at 3.4. Uh, gigahertz previously I'd remember we were at 3.2 gigahertz so let's see how much better we're gonna get this the fan kicked in now which is interesting when the fan kicks in it's not thermal throttling I know we're pushing 27 watts now through and we're running 3.2 gigahertz the initial uh, PL1 power limit we exceeded that as you can see PL1 power limit is 28 watts but we went 34 so it's interesting we'll see how much better score we're gonna get there now but see, it's still trying to push it a bit further. It's 3.2 gigahertz there, but it was pushing 3.3 as well. Ah, now it's 3.1, 3.2. The power window is definitely open for longer. But interestingly here, um, the two cores, one of them is 5 gigahertz and the other one is 5 gigahertz. Previously, we were like 5.2 and 5.1 on two of the cores and then 4.9 on the other two. Right now, the actual maximum single core performance has gone slightly down. Um, judging by the actual clock speeds. Come on, last little stretch, my little guy. Boom, look at that. 5.263. 
So we roughly gained about 5% or something like that. So there is a little bit of uh, room to push it a little bit, uh, especially if you've got the thermal uh, performance. So let's shut this down and then open this PC up. So I'm gonna go over this a little bit more. So you've got like these grills on the side. In terms of the SD card speed here, it's UHS-1. So you're gonna get roughly about 100 to 120 megabytes per second uh, read speeds from here. I tested it with my uh, V90 card, which should read it at 300 megabytes per second if it's UHS-2 speeds, but it only gets it like, you know, 100, something like that. So it's 10 gigabit port, basically. Very fast port, one 10 gigabit USB type A head for a microphone jack. USB 4 port here, USB Type-C, USB 4 port, another one of those in the back there, which also supports bit display pass-through, HDMI port, two 10 gigabit Type-A ports in the back, one gigabit Ethernet and another display port there. So you can get a lot of monitors working with this if, if you want to, or, or, or if you're looking for a PC that can support just very high resolution, like 4K monitors, four of them, then this is the one. So in order to open this up, you're gonna have to do these uh, screws underneath the legs. And I like that these screws are there because usually they're like hidden underneath some places or something like that so you're not able to actually uh like undo them so easily but this looks very very simple oh look it's pre-tapped as well okay so this is the ribbon cable that connects to the sata part careful when pulling this one out or when you want to remove it because you might um damage these uh connections there so you can put one the SATA, you know, SSD in there if you want to. And then also you've got a little thermal pad here for the SSD's heatsink there actually. So this one over here, what SSD we have is an Intel 660p, 512 gigabytes. And we've got crucial uh, RAM here. So eight gigabytes, 3200 megatransfers per second, CL22 RAM. M.2. So let's have a look what's underneath on the other side. So the Wi-Fi antennas are on there as well. So careful when pulling this out. But here we've got, um, you know, the motherboard and the whole lot. BIOS battery over there. So as you can see, you can take the top panel off uh, to let more airflow in, I guess. So it is blowing it in from the top. I'm gonna to put it back together and see if we can actually increase uh, the power by just removing the top panel, just because it lets air in then from there, which is just interesting design. So let's have a look at the thermal paste application as well. We've got two heat pipes here on this CPU. So let's have a look how well have they applied the thermal pastes. If it can be improved or if it can't. Uh, this heatsink here actually goes over, uh, I think this must be, must be chipset on the side as well. So let's pull this off. And thermal paste application is, is pretty good. They've put it in there and it's there, it's fine. Uh, this is um, just the thermals for the VRMs there. So let's clean it up, put some new thermal paste in, put it back together and then see if we can improve uh, the thermal performance by keeping the lid open on the top. Use alcohol to clean this up. Look how much dirt there is still after we think it's all clean. I have this MX-5 from Arctic. It's nice and sticky. Nicely cover it all. And let's put this back. Okay, we're back inside. Let's have a look if we have done anything differently. Let's see if the bio settings have applied. So let's have a look. Okay, 101 degrees. Look at that. We're pushing 51 watts through, 55 watts. Nothing like that before. It's just because the thermal, it just feels like there's more thermal mass maybe that um, the new um, thermal paste application, what we did there was able to push even more through. Previously it was like, what, 37? Now look at that, 55 watts. Okay, and 101 C. But let's see what's the difference in terms of uh, the actual uh, performance there. 
Look, the CPU package is definitely lower in terms of temperature. As you can see, previously we were like in the 80s or something like that. And right now we're pulling 3.2 gigahertz. Let's see if the score is going to be any better. So we've got 5,235 points, which isn't that much better. The temperatures were better. We were pulling more watts through there, as you can see, but the score really isn't different so if you're doing this i wouldn't recommend just undoing the thermal uh, paste in there because it's a little bit of a tedious job and you can break something it's very like ridiculous thing you can take the lid off there if you want to that's much easier and that will get your temperatures down and maybe a little bit uh, better uh, performance there but in conclusion then what do i think about this uh, geekom it11 mini pc i think it's very interesting pc for people who are looking for something small with a lot of graphics uh, power and a good ingested station. If you're gonna use very fast uh, dock for card readers or something like that, or SSDs, you can ingest stuff very, very fast to maybe some other, like a NAS or something like that. So it's very interesting little mini PC. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know down there. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave it in the description below as well, so you can check it out and, and you know, basically buy it. That's, that's what it is. And if you're looking to build yourself a best bank for buck PC, then check out the best bang for buck PC build guides in the description below. There's four parts there and then you can fit it to your budget. Whatever budget you have, you get the best performance PC for you. They're down there. I always recommend these in the end of every single video because I just know they're so, so good. Okay, thanks guys for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, likes and subs as well. Bye-bye.